have a yeah, bedside table. Childcare forms? Yeah. Meet Joe and Anita. If they look scared to you, it's because they're faced with the daunting prospect of childcare. That's not why we're scared. And they should be scared. The national stats don't paint a pretty picture. Neither do you. About 80% of parents experience substantial difficulties with childcare in terms of quality, cost or availability. Maybe they've left it too late to get their about-to-be-conceived baby into a good childcare centre. Listen, lady, we are not trying to have a baby. But what if we were? Mm, then there's no time to waste. Otherwise, this could be you. <laughs> Difficulty getting a childcare place means some parents feel they just have to take what they can get. This one has a vacancy. And it's only four suburbs away. Oh, but it's run by bears. Do I go bald? Come on, get your shoes on. One survey found that 40% of families spend more on childcare than their mortgage. OK, how do I get Fregidal's name on a waiting list? Somewhere close to... Did you just call our hypothetical future child Freginald? He's named after his two great-grandfathers, Fred and Freginald. Oh, whatever. Let's go. We're late for drop-off. You'll get used to this. Hello. Welcome to my daycare shop. What type of daycare would you like to buy? Uh, um, well, we've got long daycare or centre-based care, which is for children aged 0 to 6. They're generally open from 7.30am to 6pm, which is good for working parents. It includes structured early education and usually includes meals. More than half of kids in childcare go to long daycare. Then there's family daycare, where a small group of children go to the home of a registered carer. The carer is monitored by an agency or local council. About 16% of kids in formal childcare attend family daycare. There's also occasional care, which is less than 1% of childcare, and outside school hours care for older kids. Tommy made these ones. Childcare can also be categorised by management type, in particular whether it's run for profit or not. Hmm. Which one takes care of your kid for 24 hours a day from, say, 0 to 18? That's adoption. How much is that? Mm, don't know. You'll have to ask Tommy, who's adopted. <laughs> and not. <laughs> but long day care is more expensive than family day care. And they're both more expensive than my delicious lemonade. Now, these are averages. Prices vary hugely by region. In some long daycare centres in metro areas, it can cost close to $200 a day. So how do we know what our options are? Uh-uh. No hat, no play computer. MyChild.gov.au is Australia's online childcare portal. It's the best place to start looking for a childcare provider. Enter your suburb or postcode and you'll get a list of all the childcare options in your local area. Even if you already know of a childcare provider, you should search them on mychild.gov.au. That's important, because to get the government's means-tested subsidy for childcare, you need to use an approved provider. And if you want to get an idea of what your out-of-pocket costs will be, check the subsidy estimator at education.gov.au. You can find similar information at startingblocks.gov.au, which also has info on children's development and other things you can do at home to complement what your little Freddy is doing. We prefer doing. Freginald. Really? So we use the My Child site to find local options, but Look, I'd... we just want the best for our Freginald. That we can afford. Well, you'll want to use the My Child site to research the government's... <laughs> National Koality Standard. Click on the tab for quality to see how each place has been rated according to the national standard across seven areas. They're also given an overall rating, ranging from significant improvement required... Found it! ..through to excellent. Oh, that place run by bears is exceeding the national quality standard for educational programs. Mm, but they're only working towards not eating children. Local council managed centres tend to get better ratings than private for profit centres. The NQS ratings can help you make a shortlist of providers, but then you need to pay them a visit. Most parents rely on a gut feeling rather than doing research, but going armed with a list of questions will help you make your decision. I've got a bad gut feeling from too much jumping. The Starting Blocks website has a checklist of things to look for when visiting a childcare centre. See for yourself the way staff interact with children. Check out the activities on offer and the spaces where the kids play, eat and sleep. Children, playtime is complete. 
For lunch today, gelatinous nutrition portion. Ask questions about their NQS rating and what they're doing to improve. Ah, would you like to meet our discipline eagle? Um... Uh... Oh, don't worry, she has a certificate three in early childhood. Ask about their education philosophy and see if you're happy with the split between planned programs and free play. Well, we have a full range of activities here, from crafts like sewing to learning about new technology. No! How do you update parents about their child's day? Oh, well, we'll let you know what activities they've been up to, what they've learned, and how many units they've produced. Units of playtime? <laughs> Starting Block says to look for a centre where the educators get down to your child's level to speak with them. Have you reached your quota for the week? Um... Otherwise, we might need another visit from Harold, the Regional Productivity Manager. <gasps> no, don't stab, son. And don't forget those practical questions too, like whether they provide things like nappies, formula and meals, and their policies for dealing with sickness and accidents. <laughs> Once you've found one you like, it's time to get on the waiting list. <laughs> Childcare waiting lists can be long. Can I just have your... Son's full name? Credit card number. And expensive. Not all providers charge them, but fees to get on a wait list range from $10 to $100, some even as high as $1,500. And even if the fees are lower, they can add up. But you get that back. Right? That depends. Some places will let you put that money towards their fees, but a lot of the time it's non-refundable. So be careful, especially since many providers won't be forthcoming about your place in the queue or your chances of ever actually getting a place. So what if we pay all these waiting list fees and we never hear back? Well, it can help to give them a call every now and then to update your details and remind them that you're still keen. I'm gonna need a holiday after this. <laughs> Actually, public holidays and childcare is an issue we get a lot of complaints about. I recently had to pay for my son's childcare on public holidays. We have to pay for three days of childcare that my child cannot attend. <laughs> You'll often get charged for days your child doesn't attend, including sick days, if you go on holidays, but also public holidays when the centre's closed. So. Even if I'm working on a public holiday and childcare's closed, I have to pay to have my kid not looked after. You can still get government entitlements for the first 42 absent days of any financial year. For any other complaint, you're still covered by the consumer law, even at a not-for-profit centre. Like any other service, you can take complaints to your state's fair trading authority. Follow me! So remember, do your research and make your plans early. Check quality ratings online and visit centres to check out their facilities and practices. Confirm charging policies for holidays, sick days and waiting lists. Or you could just use protection. OK, I'll leave you to it. So, where were we? Absolutely not.